Bad Lieutenant is a 1992 crime film directed by Abdel Ferreira and starring Harvey Keitel in a defining role as the protagonist simply known as the lieutenant. This is a movie that I've known about for ages. I've always heard that it was the essential Harvey Keitel film containing his quintessential performance, but just never got around to watching it until now. In fact, on my last live stream, this was the movie that my subscribers and I decided we'd watch and then talk about on the next live stream, which is coming this Saturday in the evening. Join us if you want to. Bad Lieutenant was a film I found quite surprising because it was not really at all what I expected. Harvey Keitel's filmography is pretty much spammed with cop movies in which he plays a tough-as-nails, hard-edged detective. Maybe he's trying to investigate a murder like in Clockers, or is corrupt himself like in Copland. This film and this performance was a lot different, however. For starters, even though the plot of the film apparently follows this corrupt New York City police detective's investigation of the brutal rape of a nun, it doesn't have much of a story to speak of. All of that stuff is really the backdrop to the core of the story, which is the study and transformation of a deeply troubled man, who, before the film has even started, has dropped off the deep end and is a complete degenerate in terms of his gambling issues, drug addiction and corrupt behaviour. It is also a far more of a religious film than it is a crime film, dealing with themes such as Catholic guilt and redemption, and this is something it leans on throughout the film and then goes all out with the end, even a cameo from the Catholic interpretation of Jesus. I actually did a bit of research into the Catholic concept of forgiveness after I watched the film to get a better understanding of it as forgiveness is a huge theme of the movie, with the nun for example choosing to forgive the two men who ravaged her in a church no less, talk about vilifying the pure, and this being something that touches the lieutenant on a deep level and causes him a kind of epiphany of sorts, as the demons and regrets locked deep down in the back of his mind explode into the forefront in the form of a breakdown. This is a movie that feels very much like a 1970s Martin Scorsese film. It's a character study in the same milieu of films like Taxi Driver. As mentioned, it deals heavily with Catholic themes, and of course it also stars Scorsese regular Harvey Keitel, in the kind of part Robert De Niro would usually play. Here Keitel is front and centre, in a kind of role that he never got to play under Scorsese, but finally has his chance to show off what he's made of. Funnily enough, Scorsese called this one of his favourite films of the 1990s, and Keitel's performance was remarkable. He really captured the essence of this twisted and perverted degenerate who is spiralling further and further into his debauchery. Of course, it does mean having to see a few scenes here and there of Keitel with his wang out, waddling like he's pretending to be a chicken in one scene, and doing this high-pitched moan for so much of the film you'll be forgiven for thinking it's part of the movie's soundtrack. But the morality in the character is there. This isn't just a low-life copper who's abusing his power. There is something deep down in the man where he knows what he's doing is wrong, and he needs an outlet, he needs direction to forgiveness. And this is something essential to the character, essential to the ending, and it's something which Keitel is able to pull off exceptionally. Because otherwise you might think the movie is an hour of the lieutenant walking around New York doing horrible things, and then gets a conscience in the last 10 minutes or so of the film. And that's pretty much what he does, he just goes around doing depraved and crooked things, like investigating a store robbery and pocketing the cash from the robber, uh, being more interested in placing sports bets than investigating the murder he's supposed to be solving, taking drugs galore, and the standout scene in the movie, a proper weird part where he seizes on an opportunity and takes advantage of two young girls early on in the film who are driving their dad's car without a license. He's got his head in the front window of the car, talking to the driver, and you can see the girls getting a bit weirded out and uncomfortable, and you can see where this is going, but it really doesn't go where you think it's going, at least not quite. He plays up the seriousness of the situation to the girls, and then puts the idea in their head that if they do something for him, he can do something for them, and then he just comes out with it and asks them, have you ever sucked a guy's cock? This goes on for a bit and you think, okay, maybe he's going to have a cheeky hand job or a BG, maybe even elicit a wham bam thank you ma'am from one of the girls in an alleyway. But then fucking bizarrely, he tells one girl to face the other way and show a giant ass, and the driver to stick her mouth out in front of her and pretend she's sucking an invisible cock. So we're watching this girl make an absolute fool of herself, rocketing her head back and forward with her mouth agape, 
And then we cut to Kaitel, and disturbingly, the geese has got his cock out and is masturbating furiously. The director shows us him whacking his meat for a good minute, just in case we weren't entirely sure what was going on. Kaitel finishes, wipes himself, and then pisses off back to his car, leaving the girls and us thinking, what the fuck? It's definitely one of the most memorable scenes in the film. I heard that there's an infamous alternative cut, where Kaitel, ever the method actor, actually jacks off and explodes all over the car. The fact that he chooses to shake the weasel with a free softcore show instead of something normal like an actual blowjob highlights how depraved the man is, but it could also show that there is an inclining restraint in the man, because he could have taken further advantage of the girls but chose not to, whether for their sake or because they could pin a sexual assault charge on him. Either way, the showing of restraint suggests that he hasn't yet completely fallen off the edge, which links nicely to the end of the film where his conscience reveals itself. The style of the film feels very raw and real, and it's not just Kaitel's extant performance, but, well, everything really. There's a lot of drug abuse in the film, and some of it is real, from one character in particular who apparently took heroin for real in the film, and this actress who also co-wrote the script died from drug-related heart failure in real life. Even director Ferreira was on drugs when making the movie. The movie has a very gorilla feel, like what you're watching is not a film production but real life, much like the aforementioned 1970s Scorsese pictures and a lot of movies from the Hollywood New Wave 20 years before Bad Lieutenant came out. It feels very gritty and sleazy, it feels like it really captured the downbeat and dirty feel of NYC sidewalks and claustrophobic apartments. And I guess a big reason for this is because Ferrer actually filmed the film without permits, they just went out there and started filming, so a lot of the actions and reactions from the background people must have been real. The movie contains an abundance of metaphors and allegories, whilst maintaining its very real feel. Like for example, there's a scene early on in the film where Kaitel scolds his two kids in the car for not being tough enough, mirroring a scene near the end of the film where Kaitel pulls a gun on and threatens a duo of rapists en route to giving them some cash and sending them on a bus, who are sitting in almost exactly the positions his sons were. All signs and symbols point to the theme of forgiveness, with the lieutenant's faith telling him that Jesus died for the sinful, and Kaitel doing something very similar in the film to recompense for his bad deeds. Bad lieutenant wallows in its degradation and vice. It feels dirty and vulgar, and I felt dirty and vulgar watching it. Numerous scenes seem included just to provoke and heighten the sense of wickedness, long after the point is already made, like the main character snorting coke on his kids' photos. It's following a character who really is in the lowest of lows. It's like we're watching a guy who actively seeks out his own devastation through drugs and alcohol and all of that stuff. I would say this is actually a religious movie, more than a crime film anyway. Especially towards the end, I think most people, including myself, who have limited knowledge of Catholicism, would find it very problematic. And it was only after doing a bit of digging I thought to myself, okay, yeah, I get it. I don't agree with it, but the movie now makes sense from a Catholic's point of view. Like, for example, I won't talk about the ending for the sake of spoilers, but after the horrific abuse the nun suffers, it kind of reinforces Kaitel's nihilistic view of the world, but she instead chooses to forgive her abusers after this heinous crime seeing her rapists as victims of their own despair. This suggests that there is potential for goodness even in the most repellent of sinners, and the movie kind of challenges us to see Kaitel's character in the same way the nun saw the two rapists. I heard that the script for the film was pretty basic and rough, and they were even going to cast Christopher Walken and sprinkle the movie with a bit of humour, but Ferrero credits Harvey Kaitel's coming on board really changing things up. The strength of Bad Lieutenant hinges on Kaitel's unrestrained and raw performance. Whether he's high as a kite, howling, moaning, sobbing, or whipping his cock out again, Kaitel perfectly complements the rough but introspective nature of the film. It's not for everyone. I mean, it's essentially an hour of a guy doing horrible things and then feeling bad and making one heck of a controversial decision. But a strong lead performance and an atmosphere of authentic debauchery and bleakness makes this an interesting watch. I give it a 7 out of 10.